If you would like to shoot time-lapse photography and have an entry-level DSLR like this one right here, which is the Nikon D3400, that does not have built-in time-lapse capabilities, and you have an Android device that does not have a built-in IR blaster, stay tuned, this video is for you. A few days ago, I released a video on time-lapse photography, and I demoed the Nikon D3400, and I also demoed um, using the Samsung Galaxy S5. Now, this particular phone and a handful of Android devices have built-in IR blasters, so it acts like a wireless device to remotely release the shutter on the camera. I also mentioned that you can use a cable like this. Now this is an OTG cable which stands for on the go. Now if you haven't seen my previous video, not a problem, I'm going to post a link in the description below. Take a few moments and go watch it and I, it'll answer a lot of detailed questions about time-lapse photography. This particular video is not meant to get into all the detailed settings of the camera because I already did that. What I'm going to do in this particular video again is just focus on this cable right here and I'm going to go over how to hook this up to the smartphone and how to hook it up to your camera and I'm going to also showcase an application that I've used on my Galaxy that will remotely fire the shutter on this camera. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. Before we get into the application let's talk about the cabling and how to connect it to the camera and to the phone. To begin with we have the OTG cable right here. Now I'm going to post a link in the description below as to where you can get this from. This is relatively inexpensive and runs about five or six dollars, somewhere in that range. This right here is a traditional uh, micro USB charging cable that you might see in most Android devices. Now when we go to connect this up, this generic cable right here must connect to our camera. The OTG cable will connect to the phone. If you get this backwards, the application will not work. So it's something to think about. So let's go ahead and make that happen right now. This is our generic cable right here. On the side of the camera we have our uh, flap right here and we open it up right above my fingers where the micro USB port is. Let's go ahead and connect into that now. With that connected I'm going to connect the USB to the OTG USB. And with that connected we're going to connect the OTG cable to our phone. I'm going to go ahead and unlock our phone now and we'll take a look at the application. The application is right here where my thumb is. It's called DSLR Remote Control. I'll post a link as to where you can get this from in the Play Store. Now, one thing to note is before launching this application, you want to power the camera on. When we go to power this on, the phone's going to recognize that we have something attached to it and we'll, let's just take a look and see what happens. So right here, the phone's coming back and it's saying, hey, would it be okay if the gallery accesses this device? Now, I'm going to hit cancel here. And this is important that you say cancel because if you say okay, the gallery will have access to your camera, which means the application will not run properly. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. But right now, let's go ahead and hit cancel. And then we have a list of shortcuts that come up here at the bottom. Now, you can try and launch the application from the shortcut right here. But when I've done this in the past, it seems to have failed to launch. So the way I find success is to go ahead and just hit back and then launch the application from the screen itself, which I'm gonna do right now. Now when I do this, the application's gonna open up in landscape mode and you're presented with the message right here at the bottom that basically says ensure that your camera is connected and powered on before launching this app. So we've already done that. This message right here is saying, do you want this application to be the default app? Now, you might want to go ahead and check that box and hit OK. For demonstration purposes, I will not check it and just go ahead and hit OK. You get a little prompt here. They want you to upgrade to the pro version and I'm going to say not now. I don't feel that the pro version is needed for what we're going to do here, so again, not now. And here's our application. Now right here where my thumb is, where I'm tapping, right above that is a remote shutter release. 
Now the camera's just pointing at a blanket. I'm gonna move this around just a little bit so it points up. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit this and we should hear the camera fire. There you go. So it's able to remotely fire our camera. Now in order to do time lapse, on this particular application, right here at the top, there's a time lapse tab. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. Now when we hit that right here, you can see it says limit duration. Time interval is set to one second. That's the way it is by default. The green button says start, red is stop. I'm gonna go ahead and hit limit duration. Now when I went ahead and limited the duration, you can see right here, it gives us a few options. We have the option to go ahead and change the time interval from one second. If I tap on that, we can make it any amount of time that we want. Two seconds, three, four, and there's five seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and set time. The duration is set to one minute. At five seconds over one minute, we're gonna have 12 frames. Now this tells us if you're shooting for 30 frames a second, that is one fourth of a second. So this gives you some options here, which are kind of nice. And it's basically calculating the time lapse for you. There's 2.8 second time lapse on seven minute shooting at five frames a second at 30 frames down here. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit this start and we'll see it run. I'm just pointing the camera up so that we can get focus. And there you go. So every five seconds, this is gonna go ahead and fire. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this. And keep in mind, it looked like the screen went out, but it was just incredibly dim. So it was still actually running. I'm gonna go ahead and turn our camera off right now. Now, for a deeper understanding of time lapse, please view that previous video I've already done. But I wanna show you real quick a potential error message that you may encounter. So with the camera off and everything connected, what I'm gonna do is turn the camera back on. And when I do this, we're gonna get the prompt on the phone. If you answer okay for the gallery to access this camera, you're presented with the shortcuts again. I'm gonna back out of this. I'm gonna launch our application. Again, it's gonna open in landscape mode. And this looks very similar to the last time we did this. And that's fine, I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK here. And now you see this error message at the bottom. It's a communication error. And again, it's right there. Now when you get this error message, the application will not work. I can say not now, not now, but we're not able to remotely release the shutter. So that's something to pay attention to. Just ensure that you answer no to the gallery trying to access this camera. And you should be in good shape. If you find yourself in a situation where you have an Android device but it does not have the IR blaster, just know that the OTG cable will definitely work. Now keep in mind the application that I used in this demo is one of perhaps a handful that are out there on the market that may do the trick as well. That particular application I have found to have a few little bugs here and there, but it definitely works for the most part. And if you're an iPhone user, well don't give up hope because I believe if you can get an IR blaster for your iPhone, you can use it as a wireless trigger like I did in my last video to remotely control the shutter and you'll be in good shape. If I get my hands on one of those, I'll definitely do a video and put it to the test and let you know how that works out. So hopefully this video has helped you out. If it has, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.